This is Shooting Spaces with Rich Baum and Brian Berkowitz. Hello and welcome to Shooting Spaces. This is Brian from New York. And Rich from Sacramento, California. And how is everyone doing today? What's up, Rich? Rain, rain, rain. It we got to go away. We need rain, but uh, been cancellations right and left. Um, but uh, it's been pretty good. Been uh, very happy. Very, oh, nice. Uh, we had a blizzard happy. this week. Very I rare know, blizzard. It was like you got three feet of snow, didn't you? Not that much, but where okay. I am, I got about fourteen or fifteen inches. Mm-hmm which for some people yeah. like in the Midwest doesn't sound like much, but that's a pretty big deal here in New York. So, well, we got, if it'll make you feel any worse, we got 10 feet of snow, um, up the hill, but, uh, at least that's for skiing. So, oh, that's a whole and we got story. another, uh, another four or five feet yesterday. So I'm not able to ski cause of my knee uh, replacement, but my oh. son has been loving it. It's just yeah. Hopefully some East coast skiing will be a little better after this big storm this weekend. Mm-hmm. Cause I've gone a few times this, um, this past winter and it's been pretty lousy so mm-hmm. well you know what it's you you know we're we're so fortunate out here in the west coast that to have uh you know i'm an hour from lake tahoe and it's it's pretty darn nice really nice. that's not bad at all my closest man oh look at the mug my closest available do, for do, everyone do on the shooting from, spaces do you purposely sip from that angled perfectly to the camera absolutely man I'm a, I'm a fiend for making it perfect oh but if people that are listening i'm i'm putting my shooting spaces coffee mug in uh, the in the camera and uh, if you're not familiar with them go on shooting spaces dot net no yeah shooting spaces dot net and uh we have them for sale yeah, mine's not as exciting as yours. Mine's Let me see yours. What's that? Oh, that's not. Is that a shooting? That's no, like, it's not, a, it's a, like a holiday package. Star- I think it's a holiday package. Starbucks mug. <laughs> Who knows? And how's the uh, family been doing? Okay, and the kids are uh, home home from school. Are you? Are they even going to school right now? No, my kids have been in school the whole time except for this last week. Wow. My son had a uh, positive classmate. Uh-huh. A, a classmate tested positive, so his class has been on quarantine for. Um, about 10 days. So wow. got three more days home and then he's back at school. So second time this year. So it's, it's rough, but you know what? It could have been a lot worse than two times so far. So we'll I've, I've got uh, from firsthand stuff with uh, COVID, not myself, but uh, it's, it's there, man. It's still, still there, but what an exciting, uh, what an interesting, but exciting new year. It's going to, it's going to be, uh, I, I just hope it's going to be, rocking and i think it is there's just houses are going i shot a uh, three two and a half million dollar house and it was on the market it was pending in one day wow. and that's two and a half on a up here it's that's a lot of house for you uh where i am and uh on a golf course and it just went right away i couldn't believe it awesome it's good to got some killer mm-hmm. photography yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, anyway. I'm still making sure that my agents still need photography. Some of them are actually going, I'm not even going to shoot it because uh, I'm not even worried about it. It's just going to sell. No, no problem. So, you know, it's a, it's a new problem coming up. Yeah. Um, anyway, we haven't asked the guys today. So before we get into it, I'm going to mention a quick word from HD Photo Hub. HD Photo Hub is a real estate photographer's platform for fast and efficient business workflows. HD Photo Hub automates the boring stuff by integrating with Google Calendar, Dropbox, QuickBooks, YouTube, Vimeo, MailChimp, and more. So you have more time to focus on the fun stuff. If you haven't seen them lately, take a look at hdphotohub.com. That's Mm hdphotohub.com. And uh, speaking of your two and a half million dollar house you just shot, our Ask the Guys question is on a little bit of the opposite spectrum. So it'll be an interesting take so here we go let me play it for you hi this is mike price of fairfield photography in pickerington ohio i started working with an affordable housing management company here with about 200 complexes in the upper midwest i've done their headshots for almost five years and they're now starting to use me for their interior and exterior work to update their website and marketing material so while i've read and watched a lot of technique on shooting the 5,000 square foot palatial estates I'd like some advice on shooting 900 square foot apartments and townhomes. The tight quarters and challenging layouts have made it harder to shoot so far, and I appreciate some advice on shooting small spaces. Thanks. Wow. All right. That's, uh, 
that's a situation that I'm sure I would like to think most of the people out there have, uh, you know, I know you're, uh, you're not shooting small houses right now, right? No, but, you know, remember something. I mean, I'm not really doing much residential at all, but if I go into New York City for a residential mm. listing, everything you're getting from an apartment standpoint is tiny. I mean, New York City apartments are, are small. That's just... Uh, well, I guess we should, we should separate that too. Not only small places, but let's add in small and cheap or, you know, not... <laughs> I don't want to say anything bad about them because I shoot them all the time, but, or small and, you know, like a small uh, $2 million apartment in New York city, I would yeah. shoot differently than a uh, $200,000 shack, uh, you know, uh, the same size. So well, I think well, that's on, important for me. Yeah. I mean, on that, it's, 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 I'm actually curious to hear what you have to say. Cause you say you shoot it differently because I probably won't approach it that much differently as far as on-site shooting. My technique will probably be similar. Now, obviously, you have to be a little bit more careful with your lens choice because chances are a smaller apartment, smaller rooms, typically smaller bedrooms, stuff like that. So you have to be a little more, um, I guess, creative with your lens choice, if that's the right word. You know, when you're... It, it, the, the lens, to me, I'll be honest with you, it, it's not going to really make a big difference. Now, if there is a, a teeny backyard or something, I might pull out the uh, 12 to 24 full frame, which is really, really wide. But at least I could go to 14 or 15 or 16 millimeters. But uh, I usually shoot with 18 millimeter equivalent. That's Samyang 12 millimeters. And uh, that's uh, the equivalent of 18 millimeters. And whereas, you know, 16 is a little little better, in my opinion, overall, um, I just like shooting uh, with the smaller uh, A6400 and the Samyang lens, because uh, it's just so fast, so easy, so just, it's a no-brainer to me. That's your go-to um, lens? So that is my go-to combination, at least uh, for the last six months. I, I still am shooting the A7 III full frame with a 16 to 35, uh, really nice, wonderful lens. But I just don't use it that as much. I use it for all my twilight stuff. Uh, I always use the A7 III because that is better low light performance and, and noise performance. But um, I just find that little combination. I also don't have to focus it because I set it to hyperfocal di distance, mm -hmm. which is um, I set it to just shy of infinity. And everything from three feet to infinity is always in focus. So that saves how much time do you spend on a a shoot focusing like yeah uh, no for sure a I minute mean, or i mean two minutes three minutes exactly yeah no for sure and I, that's a great mm -hmm. feature i used to have the canon 14 millimeter which has the same three foot hyperfocal distance mm -hmm. and it's great you set it and then you don't have to think about it yeah. all day but what i was referring to my go-to lens is typically a 24 that 24 barely ever leaves my camera I so wish. <laughs> so that being said um, even for real estate, I'm using 24 primarily. So occasionally I'll pull out the 17 if I'm doing a small powder room or stuff like that. But in the same sense, if I'm shooting a, you know, a 900 square foot apartment where the bedrooms are typically smaller, the 24 might crop out a little bit too much of the bedroom where I might have to, mm -hmm. like I said, get a little creative with my lens choice and go with a 17 if i want to stay with this tilt shift i actually just bought the new 15 to 35 so now i can go as far wide as 15 on my canon if i need to mm. so yeah. how is that lens good yeah, have you sharp. used it yet yeah, yeah. yeah the new canon awesome. lenses are really really sharp i've been using and it 15's not too it's not too too much stretching yeah i mean i don't use it often mm. um barely ever i mean that lens is more i've, I've been using it a little bit more for some real estate videos I've been doing because um, I started doing some commercial real estate videos now for some of my clients. Um, so when I throw the 15 to 35 on the gimbal, um, even with the zoom, if I have to zoom it in a couple of millimeters here or there, um, it's not going to really throw off the balance so mm. much. And if it does, and I'll just recalibrate it quickly, it takes a minute. Um, that makes and, a lot of sense for video. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that gives me the options if I need to go really wide from 15 all the way up to 35. So I, I throw that on my camera, my secondary camera for video and just leave that on when I'm, when I'm doing video. Mm -hmm. But I mean, my choice for using a 6400 is just because it's, it's 
more of an expendable camera, a disposable camera, less money. The lens is a prime lens, so I don't spend time zooming and going, oh my God, I need to do, wait, wait, maybe let me get wider, let me do this. I basically <laughs> cut it down, you know, just stick the tripod in the corner of the room and uh, that's pretty much it. Your I'm mammoth not tripod? Uh, my mammoth tripod, but my mammoth tripod goes down to about a, uh, I can get the footprint this big. So wow. it's a tremendous, uh, without having to move individual legs, it just scoots up the uh, Manfrotto 3046. It is big and heavy, but it, it is really versatile and I love it. So It is, but every time I see you post a picture with that, I always say to myself, how God's name it's is okay. it? It's okay. You know what? I think when you try it, some, Carbon people, fiber, some man. people like it. I've got, a, I've got a $1,200 really right stuff, carbon fiber tripod. I just don't ever use it except for uh, landscape photography. So, uh, anyway, well, listen. Let's let me stay on on track with with uh, what we were talking about because we could get into the minutia of equipment and absolutely and anything you use or you say I, I is valid and I I you know will, will agree with most of it. So you know it's all just personal preference. But um, as far as shooting the let's say the less expensive smaller places, I think you've got to the difference is the quality difference you're going to see is not going to be that much difference. But the time it takes me to shoot a multi-million dollar house is just longer because I'm also going to be just really spending more time on each shot. And as I always say, it's, it's seconds upon seconds where it's going to take me at least 20 minutes longer to shoot a big place. Uh, even if I'm jamming, it's just going to take me longer. Um, and it's mainly because I'm going to take more care. I'm, I'm just going to be, I'm going to analyze it more. Is it going to be that much better? No, it's not though. You know, it's going to be like an ugly, an ugly model. You know, it's going to, it's going to be what it is. So I think you've just got to get, um, you got to get in the frame of mind that this is what you're doing. Get an understanding from your client. Um, you know, try and deliver something that you can live with that is faster or easier for you. And if your client likes it and likes the look of it, then you're good to go, man, and try and make it as simple and easy as you can. Try and make it a formula. You know, come in and, I mean, I shoot right from the front door because I want to just go bam, bam, bam in a progression. It's kind of like Wayne Capilli's uh, life farming. I just will always shoot in a, in a direction where I'm going to be just moving in and in and in. Uh, and he does sometimes moving out and out and out, which is basically the same thing. But um, I like to be as efficient as possible. I, uh, I really think that um, you get a formula down, you get the, especially these smaller houses, you know, they're, they have certain traits to them that are going to lend themselves to each other. So you're going to kind of have an idea when you get going there, you know, what, what it is. And uh, I think you're going to find your flow because uh, I, I posted this the other day. Uh, I really do enjoy shooting these big, really big places, really expensive places, but give me a nice white small house. And I'll tell you something, man, it, it is just so fast and so easy. And uh, it's really, 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 um, it's something that I've come to really enjoy. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a multi-million dollar house, but, uh, and speaking of which is something I really enjoy. want to just say thank you to our sponsor, iGuide. And iGuide is a turnkey solution for those looking to expand their real estate photography business beyond photography to add 3D tours, 3D tours, laser accurate room measurements, square footage calculations, and professionally drafted floor plans. Get your first five standard eye guides free by adding the code shooting spaces in the referral section at camera purchase or checkout. Visit goeyeguide.com to learn more. That's goeyeguide.com. Check it out. Awesome. So back mm -hmm. to it, Rich, let me ask you, um, you yeah. said not much is, is different as far, I mean, you shoot a little bit differently and obviously you take more care. Is your technique any different? I mean, do you still just shoot flambient, one ambient frame, one flash frame? Do you still let the ambient do the heavy lifting in, in post yeah. on a smaller space? Will any of that change? Yeah. You know, part of my problem, and this is a problem is I've always lived up to it. It comes from when I worked in the movie industry, I just worked at such a high level 
that I'm always looking over my shoulder. I'm, I've got people looking over my shoulder thinking I want to make sure that they're going to be happy. So whatever I'm shooting, whether it's cheap or not, I, I'm not like doing different tiers of, of, uh, of different pricing or different tiers for that. Uh, although things might, might uh, I might charge slightly different for really small places, but I find that I'm just kind of taking a little more care, second guessing myself, shooting these really big places. I will, uh, though, always be doing uh, flambiant. Um, I don't do any HDR. Um, I rarely do brackets. I might bracket a couple if I think I need it, but I really rely on let the ambient do the heavy lifting where I let the ambient image, instead of having to go put a light or pop a light in a back room, I'll just let the ambient do it. And, and on a really expensive place, I'll probably put a couple of lights out there. When I get home, you're not going to really notice the difference in reality. And I, I, I could probably cut my losses and just uh, uh, really cut back on a lot of things. But I just can't go there. I just I wish I could, you know, and in some ways I wish I could just have an HDR uh, preset or a, uh, an HDR package uh, where I'm doing uh, infuse. But uh, I just can't go there. You know, well, I, just I will teach you how to do infuse shoot. like a champ. And you'll be able to offer. Uh, how would you do that? Or you know what? You don't even have to offer a lower package. <laughs> you just come into your shoots now and just do a, an infuse workflow and charge the same. Well, what I'd start by doing is an infuse workflow and or I'd shoot a bracket and then I'd also shoot regular because I wouldn't trust I wouldn't trust myself in the in the outcome. But I would love to learn more about infuse. Yeah, we're Brian gonna do it Berkowitz. soon. Let's we're get let's get it, it done. We I, we say that every week, but um, uh, no, we have a webinar to. coming up, a more of a photo critique mm -hmm. type of thing, which I think we teased that last time with a couple of guests. So every time every time you drink, it makes me laugh because you're you're holding the you know the logo so perfectly. Um, well, I it's the way the glasses are made, man. Yeah, like exactly. the coffee cups are just perfect. Um, so yeah, so once we get this photo critique done, which we should be, I guess, announcing in the next week or so. Um, and that'll hopefully happen the end of February, early March, I guess, mm -hmm. something, something around that time. And then we'll start yeah. getting this um, infused webinar together. So hopefully yeah. for any of those people interested in it, we're looking at, um, I guess, early spring, maybe. Hopefully we'll get it done. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. And one thing I want to kind of emphasize to Mike, who is the guy who asked the question, is unless you're just shooting a 900 square foot two million dollar space like you know like we're talking about like luxury space like in new york city or any other major city you know a 900 square foot space which you know is a government funded housing project which i think is what he said it's not going to look like a two and a half million dollar single family home so don't compare to some other mm -hmm. results that you see out there and say why does my work not look like that um there are exceptions. Like I said, you can be shooting a 900 square foot, $2 million penthouse in the city, but for the most part, it's not going to, you're not going to have the same design style. You're not going to have the same decor and all that stuff to shoot. So keep that in mind when you're going out there that, you know, you, you have to always go in and just do your best with what you have to work with. Cause you, as we all know, you never know what you're going to walk into there. And, and really uh, I, this will be something I talk about all the time, but, and I think it goes, it applies to this clarification of expectations really get an understanding from your client and in if you are going to charge you know make them a deal that you're shooting uh, at half price but you're getting twice as much just come out with something that you can live with but don't don't get into it and do something and find oh i can't make this i can't make this profitable and then change or something really go into this thinking about it and talk to your client and uh, have them you know uh, have them understand and say you know and or shoot one or two or three or four and then then assess uh is this look of the way you like it is this working out for you know you ask yourself is it working for me and then ask your client, is it working for you? And uh, I think that's really important, but that's with almost anything. You know? Cool. So yeah, I think, I think the moral of the story, Mike, is don't, don't approach it any differently. I mean, go in and do what you do. Um, that, that's, you kind of built your career or your business on, you know, doing the type of work you do just because it's a smaller space or because it's government funded housing, don't take any different approach. I mean, go in and do what you do. And if that's why they're hiring you, they're, that's what they're coming to expect. So, 
And, and try and get your, um, you know, a lot of people worry about, newer photographers worry about, well, a flambient or, or doing lighting and this and that just takes too long and it's taking three, four hours to edit. And of course, that's not going to work. But when you're getting going, your time is going to take much, much longer. But once you do it for a while, do a few hundred homes, and then you get your lighting down. And, and the better your, your in-camera work is and the better your lighting is, uh, the, the so much faster the editing is going to be all faster. And I always say, make sure you're thinking about your editing as you are setting up your shots. So you are all ready. You've got all the pieces to the puzzle because there's nothing worse than getting home and you didn't do something right. And then it's going to take you two hours to bail yourself out of this, this little uh, hole you've dug. So yeah, all those don't you love what, don't you love when you, and, Do you love when you get really home and you it. realize that? The worst is when I used to shoot Cam Ranger one and every so often, if I would, um, I forget if I, I think if my Nikon camera, if the bat, if I had to change batteries, it would reset my Cam Ranger to low quality JPEGs. And I would get yeah. home and a couple of times I'm trying to make it work and I'm trying everything I can. And I finally got to the conclusion that no, you have to reshoot the whole house because you cannot make low uh, on a 12 megapixel camera you cannot make the lowest quality jpegs um work so work. yeah no just, it's so uh, strange yeah. oh yeah that used to drive me crazy but uh yeah no just do your best to uh get everything right and uh, remember every second you save is you know add, add them up to uh you know 20 shots 25 shots that's uh you know that could be two three five seven minutes of time and that really adds up when you're doing these lower end uh houses things like that mm -hmm. so rich we got it we have another question here which i think is a very quick five or ten minute answer so should we should we double it up here yeah let's do in? it yeah all right mm -hmm. this is actually geared a little bit towards more towards you you'll be able to answer it better than i will so there wow, we go. i'm on the spot today hi this is chris Bull from salt lake city the a6000 has been officially discontinued I think two months ago, I would love to hear something about the end of the era from preferably you guys and maybe if I'm lucky, Wayne Capelli. Uh, well, Wayne can join us tonight, so it'll just be. Uh, <laughs> I'm his. I'm Wayne standing. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, just I'm, like I'm number two on the uh, A6000. Uh, exactly. That's but it. I mean, look, I, I I'm not a Sony guy. Um, I've never mm -hmm. used it. But, you know, I, I'll be glad to help further the discussion a little bit. Um, but I don't know much about it, to be honest, Rich. So I'll, I'll let you start this one off. Well, I always used to say that that my favorite, and I did, a, I have a YouTube video on my channel, um, my favorite combination, the best bang for your buck is the A6000, which uh, I think I bought my first one. I don't know. I actually only had one. I think I paid uh, two seventy nine for it. Uh, open box at Best Buy. I remember Wayne and I going back and forth, and he's a sucker for a, a deal like that. But open box, and then I would use the Samyang twelve millimeter, which I still have and still use. Uh, and I I moved up, but uh, I, I sold my A six thousand because. Um, they ended up discontinuing it, and I could have probably found another one, but. They came out with a new line, and before it was the A6000, A6300, and A6500. Um, the A6000 then became A6100, but they came out with an A6400, which I went with, and I'm really, really pleased with it because uh, something I use for other things is the magic of eye autofocus, which is Sony has got it down more than any other camera company. And it's amazing. Uh, eye autofocus, the focusing system on Sony to me is far superior than anything I've ever used. And uh, I, I would say that the if you can find an A6000 and you're not really worried about the, the faster autofocus, the A6000 and the A6400, they're about the same. They're like the same size. They, they work basically the same. One's got a uh, flip screen on it. The 6400's got flip screen on it. And it's got a lot of other things too, but it's not that much more. I think I paid $800 and I got a 18 to uh, 105 lens. So I got, you know, it's pretty cheap and I beat the poop out of them, man. I just used them all day long. And now I went with the 6400 and I still use the Samyang lens 
And I love it. And I'll tell you something, you cannot tell the difference um, between uh, my a7 III. Uh, and I'll tell you, unless you want to get into low, low light performance and um, shooting, and autofocus is a little better on the a7 III. But I'll tell you, man, this small camera and that lens, <laughs> Samyang 12 millimeters, I've mentioned it on this podcast um, today, I just mentioned, you set it for hyperfocal distance, uh, hyperfocal focusing, and you don't have to focus it. You don't have to move it. I taped down, I put a, actually put a piece of gaffer's tape over my focus ring so it doesn't change. And I just am in heaven with that combination. But if you can find a used A6000 and you want to save some money, because uh, I think you can probably get it for about $200 now, uh, almost in great, probably great condition. That's a great camera and especially a backup. I wish I had a backup for my A6400. But um, the A6400, I will say, is a is a big upgrade in a camera. It just, uh, I, I don't like it as much for regular, like I wouldn't shoot a wedding with it. I wouldn't shoot a lot of things. And I use it to shoot sports because um, it gives me the extra reach of crop sensor for us. So I get the extra focal uh, distance. I mean, the extra uh, tele, telephoto lens uh, advantage. But you know what? Either the A6000 or the A6400 uh, A6400 uh, is would be what I would get. Now, as far as another lens, you could either go with the Samyang, and it, it's it's a wonderful lens for real estate, uh, and I love it, and it's perfect for me. It's the equivalent of 18 millimeters, so it's not quite 16 or, or wider, but I don't mind it, and it's something I think people should get used to. Um, but if you want, you can check out Sony has the uh, 10 to 18, which I'm not crazy about. I never was crazy about the lens. I think it's kind of expensive for what it is. But I think that it is a very good uh, choice. Um, I also have the 12 to 24 full frame lens. So it's uh, 18 to to 38 millimeters or something, but I, I wouldn't really go say to go with that uh, on that camera. So I would say either get the Samyang or the Rokinon, they're both the exact same lens, the 12 millimeter. And I think you could probably buy it new for $240. And it's a great lens. I'm still using the same one for five years. And, uh, and uh, you could also get an adapter and put a tilt shift lens on, um, on the camera, you know, you get a, uh, uh, Sigma MC 11, um, I'm pulling out numbers from my head, but it's a $220 adapter and you can adapt a, uh, you know, a tilt shift lens. Uh, so you can have a 17 millimeter. What's, uh, what's 17 in cropland? Uh, 17 mm -hmm. uh, would be, wait, uh, how would that work? About a 24 putting 17 millimeters it's that's kind of narrow so yeah i mean it takes on the uh, divided in half and half camera half itself it's, it's, yeah uh, exactly it depends on the camera itself but the, um yeah, the crop yeah. okay anyway so i wouldn't really say to use i wouldn't say to use uh 17 is uh 24 so anyway i wouldn't no, say to my, use I a tilt shift on it i think get that camera for what it's worth and Anyway, but um, I just think that it's a great choice of camera and uh, I'm still using it. It's my primary camera for real estate now. And I am shooting multi-million dollar houses with the A6400, but you could use the A6000 too. So. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know much about it, but it sounds like um, yourself as well as um, this caller, Chris, you know, used it for a while for the real estate stuff. And based off what you're saying for the price it's it's kind of a, a great entry level camera to get into this business you can get in for you know if you take your lens combo and and buy used 6000 you know, you're talking about 500 but under 500 bucks and mm -hmm. you got a full yeah. system that you can go out and yeah you should get some flashes and this and that but you know if you want to just start off under 500 bucks and go out and shoot some brackets you can deliver um, or soon to be, I'm going to show you how to deliver some pretty decent results um, using just three brackets with infuse. Exactly. Um, so yeah, yeah. You, can get, you know, you can get in for pretty cheap using a camera like that. So I will say the uh, the Samyang lens has some um, chromatic aberration or fringing, purple fringing. Mm -hmm. So it does have that, but that's easily fixed. But I'll tell you something um, on that crop sensor body uh, at 18 millimeters. It is a very, very, very sharp lens. It is just great. I keep it at 7.1 all the time. 
and it's just great. But again, if you want to just get a better camera, much better focusing for if you want to shoot sports or people or family like this, there's no comparison. The A6400 or the whole new lineup uh, with eye autofocus is, is far, far superior. So I think it's worth spending the extra money, uh, especially if you have the lens, you could probably get a 6400 for about uh, or a 6100 you might check out. But I think you could get it for about uh, $500. So, yeah, new, so look, even sense. even that cost to this get in entry is, level right there is still pretty pretty affordable yeah. for anyone. Uh-huh. Yeah. Cool. So, mm-hmm. so sounds like the era the era is over, the 6000 era, but on to better things. Yeah, Addy, you Addy, know what you, same, it, it, so, so you it never just shoot, goes and goes and goes never, and goes. You never <laughs> shoot the your work with the A73? I do. No, 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 I do. Uh, I I shoot really big, big houses. If I'm going to use tilt shift lenses, I will use it. I use the A60. I use, the, oh, and the great thing about the little camera too is I use it on my pole. And um, I have a, uh, it extends to 18 feet. And let me tell you, man, that is, uh, or 16 feet. And there's a big difference there. So I just love the uh, the A6000 A6, or the A6400 for pole photography. Um, but if I'm going to be more doing um, Twilight, I was going to say it's also more comforting putting a, a $300 camera all the way up in the pool. I'll be honest with you, Brian. I don't even think about it anymore. I whip the, I, I used to take care and I'd have a ladder and, and, and do, oh my God, I, I got over that so fast. And I whip my camera up, whether it's the 6400 or the uh, A7 III, uh, it, it, it doesn't even, it never phases me now. I don't even, I used to, put it against the curb to foot it and bringing it up gently and this and that. You should see me working it. I just whip just it up. Dig it into the and, dirt and, uh, and walk away. It's amazing. It's just so fast and easy. Yeah, I hear you. What's that? I said you just dig it into the dirt and walk away. No, I don't even dig it into the dirt. I I, I, I literally take it this way and just, I, I kind of get it going. And I, I because then it, it doesn't put, when it's it's got momentum, going up it doesn't put as much stress on the the body of the the and the pole that i use is uh the wooster pole so it has six sides which gives it more rigidity much more than a round pole but i just i do it so fast it never even crosses my mind uh i will ever drop it or have a problem with it i have never dropped my camera once with my pole and i've used it for seven years so nice i've never knock on wood never done pole photography yet but I have a, a drone, so I guess it's a harder sell. Sometimes a drone is not appropriate. You know? no, I hear you. Sometimes you, you just, just, you can't, you know? Yeah. But it's amazing where 16 feet makes a huge difference, oh, yeah. especially like shopping malls, uh, one-story buildings. Where you don't want to get, you don't want to go too high because you see the air conditioning units of the, you know, of the commercial spaces and stuff like that. And inside of a warehouse, uh, uh, 16 foot if you have a really big warehouse with with huge you know rows of stacks of um you know what do you call them shelving and stuff like that uh the pole is the answer it's just no question and i can shoot down to a quarter of a second without um, wow without uh, shaking shake. you know? yeah you get just kind of well you you keep your hand it's like shooting a gun you 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 take you breathe out and you get it set set and then you you take pictures and it's uh, i use an ipad so works great, but uh, that's another story for another. Perfect. Time. All right. So as we wind mm-hmm. down, I'm going to just give a quick word from PhotoUp. Who doesn't like free editing? PhotoUp is now offering $100 of free editing to Shooting Spaces listeners. You can choose to work with their team of trained editors starting at just $1 per image or choose to work directly with an editor to have them learn your specific style. Don't need editing help? PhotoUp also provides virtual staging, property websites, photo delivery, and website design and development services. PhotoUp even offers specialized virtual assistance starting at under $7 an hour. Perfect if you're looking to add an assistant to help with admin and marketing tasks. Head over to photoop.net slash shooting spaces or click the PhotoUp link on our website to redeem your $100 free credit. And with that, Rich, it's always a pleasure. We want to remind people. As to, always, we want to remind people to get some "Ask the Guys" questions in. I think we have one or two questions in our queue left. We got one or two questions from holidays time. 
holiday time. And the questions are about the holiday time. So we might have to kind of push those over to next year because I don't know if they'll, uh, I don't know if we should do those now, but um, send, send some, uh, send over some questions. We can always use more, anything you got, or even if you want to just say hi, just say hi and send us a recording and we'll take a listen to it. Um, and that's that. I mean, and I'm sorry to- we couldn't get Wayne on for this, but uh, I hope I sufficed. And I'm I come from the Wayne Capilli school of of A6000, so uh, it's, I learned everything I know from him. So you're his apprentice, huh? No, 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 no. I, I would never say that. But uh, hey, look, it, no, look, I think everyone has learned something from Wayne somewhere along the lines. Mm-hmm. So cool well, stuff. It works. It works. You know, seriously. It's, and he's not just typing it for a reason. It's true. But uh, yeah, get those ask the guys in there. We've got the some webinars coming out. Check out Shooting Spaces store with for our new mugs. Uh, you got to get the mug. It's great, man. We have t-shirts. And, and Do we have hats yet? We need hats. I don't know we if we have, have baseball hats. Caps. We have t-shirts. We, we have sweatshirts. Okay. We, should, we, should, we should start doing some like giveaways and yeah. stuff and give, give some of the Presets, stuff to people. We got the, uh, the past webinars and we're going to have a couple of webinars coming up. I know we, we're saying it, but it really is going to happen. And uh, these next two coming up are going to be really, really uh, helpful to everybody. Really educational. I'm looking forward to both of them. And uh, with that, I want to say thank you, Brian. Thank everybody out there. And just go out there. And as you're enjoying your day, just enjoy shooting spaces. This has been Shooting Spaces. For more episodes, visit shootingspacespodcast.com and visit our education site at shootingspaces.net.